Well, my music is very bad because I listened to a lot of bad music when I was a kid. So I kind of wanted to emulate that. You know, grew up on my parents' record collection. Yeah, but they don't listen uh, to bad music. Yeah, they listen to all bad music. So I just wanted to like continue the Maloney legacy of being an awful musician. <laughs> The biggest mistake I've made in my music career. Biggest mistake so far. So far. Probably. Maybe putting stuff out too early before it was ready, I think. Um, so my first release as Oon was 2012, I believe. And I'd only been producing at that time seriously for like six months to a year. Um, I'd been like, you know, messing around in Ableton for years, but I had just started taking it seriously. And um, I released, early on I released most of what I made, which, you know, as you go further, 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 you kind of realize that's not really the way to do it. You should be more selective, you know, make a lot of stuff. First thing that comes to mind is, maybe it's not uh, so far as like wrong, but, maybe people don't realize, but I think when you rely on, and this kind of applies to like any artistic endeavor, like if you're relying on it, you know, as a living, as well as like your creative sustenance, um, to have like everything about yourself wrapped up into this one thing. You know, you don't have like a separate, uh, like a way you make your living and you have your art and you have you can ha kind of have these separate lives. It's all like this one thing. So if like something goes wrong, it can feel like the end of the world or it, you know, there's times where you can't, you have no idea what you're supposed to do or you just feel like really unmotivated. But it's also one of the better things about it to me because um, I've been doing it for like five years now, like as a, a job as well. But it kind of forces you to do things you might not normally do or to kind of put yourself out there more. I think it's for it to be more about the music, more music forward um, and less, you know, social media focused or influencer focused. I feel like maybe those things are necessary thing. It's, it's the world we live in, so there's only so much you can do, you know? It, that's, that's gonna be part of it. But I feel like the ratio is extremely out of whack, like to where it's maybe 10% about the music, and then 90% 90, 90 90 right? Yeah, yeah, 90% yeah. 90 uh, publicity fluff, you know, like yeah, we're yeah, like <laughs> yeah. <that's>, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Great interview. <laughs> yeah. um, Tough crowd. <laughs> uh, there's, there's been a few. I mean, I feel like anyone who's been a musician for any amount of time has those moments. I'm sure you've had the moments where it's either like the drive home or the walk home or the Uber home or whatever, where you just completely like, what am I doing with my life? Like, why am I doing this? Is this really <laughs> worth it? But there were, you know, there were gigs where I drove, like, would get in my car and drive, you know, six, seven hours, you know, play for nobody, um, get paid maybe like half of what the agreement was just cause you were, it wasn't, you know, you weren't, there weren't any contracts involved. It was all just kind of like, you know, talking, that type of thing. So it probably would have been those type of things, but it's like, even those gigs, they kind of make you who you are. And I feel like if you push through that, it kind of makes you into a more, <laughs> you, your skin, you know, gets thicker and you're just like, eh, it happens. <laughs> yeah. I think it was mostly through my productions, just cause that's kind of where I've focused, you know, most of my energy is on my productions. Um, I think when I started my label, Ego Death, that was kind of a big thing. Like not that it was like any big label, but just the fact that I had a place where I would put out stuff that I really believed in and I could put out whatever I wanted. I feel like that was kind of a turning point 
just to take that step, you know, take that chance. Um, of course, uh, releasing on Mord was a big one. So I did like a compilation track for them in like 2017 and then I, I've done two EPs now and a few compilations. But, so that that's definitely helped a lot. Um, but it's, honestly, it's not as much as you would think. Like, maybe I'm naive, but I always kind of thought, you know, if I made, you know, if I release this, 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 and I, you know, my music sounds like this, then you're set. Like, you know, you're gonna start rolling in the gigs and it's gonna be great. You're gonna be making a living doing it. But it's, um, you know, like we talked about a little bit already, it's not all about the music. But for me, I'm kind of a stubborn person. And even though I know it's not all about that, it doesn't mean, I'm still gonna, <laughs> I'm still gonna like spend all my energy just focusing on the music, just cause that's like the most important thing to me. So, so yeah. <laughs> I think now because it, it's been something I've been wanting to do for years. You know, we've talked about it many times. I've talked about it with a lot of people. Um, the advice I've usually got is like, wait for a bigger label to like, kind of vouch for you and then do an album there because more people will hear it. Um, so that was kind of like the mindset I had for a while and that's kind of why I waited so long was I was maybe like demoing stuff and trying to do an album here or there. But eventually it's like on an album format, you know, you don't want to be I don't want to demo like an album, you know, like a, a demo process where you're sending tracks back and forth and do this, this, this. An album should be like, kind of like 95% in the artist's viewpoint, in my, from my perspective. So the only way to do that was all my own label. You know, you can't be like, talk to some label, unless you're like a huge name and be like, here's the album, it is what it is. You know, that's, that's for someone on my level, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's about the COVID era a little bit, but it's also just ideas that I've had forever. It's like the, I mean, the broad concept is about liminal space, you know, like between spaces and between, you know, areas and like COVID itself was kind of like a liminal space, like that type of thing. But it's mostly, it's, it's, all, it's more personal than that as well, because the idea, this sounds so cliche, but like the, the, like the whole liminal space idea is came from like a dream, you know, cause my, my dreams that I have, like, you know, I'm sleeping, like those type of dreams. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, they're often like these liminal space ideas or thoughts to where it's like places from your past that are, you're seeing in like a new context or like something's like slightly off, but it's like a familiar place, but it's, not familiar so like i would say like 90 percent of my dreams are that kind of feeling and even if i don't remember the very specific dream that's kind of like the feeling i wake up with is these like weird in between places so i was trying to like kind of capture that musically which was hard <laughs> but <laughs> I don't, who knows if i succeed it's such like a vague thing to try to like do like for uh, in a musical format you know we that's why i was kind of reticent to call the album i'm doing like a COVID album just because it's you see that so often it's like oh this is like the COVID project or the lockdown project yeah. but it's like impossible to escape that i mean it's like like you said we all that was our lives for two years um but i think it is important to kind of like document it because it's truly like a once in a life well hopefully hopefully it's once in a lifetime well i know why this one flew under the radar but i did a ep on soma called this machine which is like the only thing i released during the lockdown or one of it was one of the only eps i released during the lockdown but since it dropped like right in the middle of lockdown it like it didn't really i feel like hardly anyone listened to it but i I, I was like trying different things. Like there's like a track with like Amen Break, which I never did. It was like, oh, I'm gonna like do all this crazy shit. Um, but yeah, that one was just kind of like flew under the radar. And then after that, I was like, eh, maybe I'll just like not release <laughs> stuff until like COVID's over, even though it's not over, but yeah. 
I think it's, I mean, and this is something I st still, you know, struggle with. You know, you always, maybe you feel like you should be like in a further place than you are, that type of thing. But I think for people just like either just starting or trying to like break into it or I think the most important thing is to just kind of like do your own thing, you know, and really work it. You know, if you want to be a great DJ, just work at it for hours and hours and hours and, you know, record, you know, a hundred bad DJ sets and play wherever you can play just so you can like get better and not expect that, you know, oh, I opened for this person. Now I'm like, now I'm, now I'm famous, you know, that type of thing. And the same thing with like producers, it's like, like we were talking about some of my old records where I'm like, Ugh, you know, like, yeah, I look back and I'm like very critical of them. But at the same time, it's like, maybe I shouldn't have released them, but the, I mean, you def I definitely should have made them. Like you need to make, you know this, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tracks before you're gonna make something that's even like remotely good. So I, I think people now might, you know, look at like what a techno DJ or a producer is doing and think that it's hard to see all the work that goes into it because they don't see that. You see like, you know, oh, here I am with my record, you know, making a post on Instagram. It's, you know, that's kind of like the end result of what the person sees. They don't see the thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of, you know, making bad music and sending bad demos and getting rejected, you know, over and over and over and over and over, you know, playing gigs to nobody. Like, I think if you go in knowing that that's what you're gonna do and you stick with it like you'll make it eventually like you'll make it to a point where you can perform and you'll you'll get you know some satisfaction fulfillment out of that you might not be able to make a living at it but i think you'll reach a point creatively to where you're happy as long as you put the work in um but as far as like i think people i think also people just kind of want to be famous now like, like more than, you know, and it's like, I just want like, you know, people to like me, which is if you're an artist, it's like, it's like, that's not really, it's not how it goes. yeah, it's not how it goes. Like I only have like my own personal experience to go off of. But for me, it was, you know, since I was in the States um, and you, you kind of know this too, like there's less, you kind of have less exposure to kind of the people you want to be dealing with where, I feel like if you're based in Europe, you could probably just like go to a festival or go to an event and you might be able to meet, you know, the label head or the person that you're wanting to talk to. And that's probably the best way to do it is try to establish some face to face rapport without being weird. Like that's also key. <laughs> like, don't be weird. Don't be, weird. Be, be subtle and you know, you can introduce yourself and da da da. But, but for me, since I was in the States, it was mostly just, you know, sending demos and you know, try to establish some kind of connection like over email and send demos and when they reject them, keep sending them. I think a lot of people will send like one or two demos and like, oh, they didn't like them, like whatever. But like say like the Mord thing, like before that first track came out, I probably sent them, you know, five or six different rounds of, of music. Um, so I think it's important that if you're like chasing something specific to not just give up because most of like this, like life is like, how can you deal with rejection, <laughs> you know? And it's like that, that kind of uh, dictates how long you're going to stay in it. Right. It's like how, if you can just like let it roll off your back, you're, you're probably going to do pretty well. But if and it, it'll affect you, you know, it, it still makes me kind of like bummed, you know, if someone doesn't like what I sent them, but it's just, if you're, if you're trying to do something with another label or, you know, trying to play a specific party, um, there's going to be a lot of rejection involved and you just got to like stick with it. Or you start your, lab, your own label and your own party, you know, it's like, or do both, you know, yeah.